Everybody wants to know what's the purpose in my life? What am I here for? Well, in this study, I want to answer the question. As a Christian, as a Christian, I don't care what the world says, what the unbelieving world says. As a Christian, what is the purpose of my life on planet Earth? As a believer in Jesus Christ, a born-again believer who's been saved by the blood of Christ, indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, in relationship with Jesus Christ, what is the purpose of my life? Why did God put me on Earth? Is it to have a career? Is it to get married and have a family and, and a bunch of kids? Is it to make a lot of money? Entertain myself with the good life? Is it to get involved in crusading for social justice and make the world a better place? What's the purpose of my life as a Christian? I want to put this before you this morning. Until we as believers answer this fundamental question and accept the consequences that come along with this answer and surrender ourselves to God's purpose for our lives, we're never going to be happy and fulfilled in this world. And the reason why is because we will not be lined up with the will, the perfect will of God for which he created us. Let me say this again. Until we as believers in Jesus Christ answer this question is what my purpose in this world is and accept the consequences of this purpose, the answer to this question, and surrender to this purpose of God in our lives, we're never going to be happy and fulfilled in this world because we will not be lined up with God's perfect will for us, the reason why he created us. Folks, we all want to find out why were we created, why were we put here by God. Our lives are not the result of mere caprice or chance. It's no accident you're here. God put you here for a very specific reason and a very specific purpose. Now, the only place we're going to find the answer to this, guess what? We ain't going to get it from Dr. Phil. We ain't going to get it from Oprah, okay? You won't find it in a public school classroom. You will only find it in one place, in the revelation that God gave. This old book that I hold in my hand this morning, the King James Bible. And according to the Word of God, what's the answer to this question? What's my purpose on earth? According to the Word of God, the answer is to know Him and to glorify Him. Look at Jeremiah chapter 9, look at verse 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. My brothers and sisters, you can discover God's specific purpose for your life. You can know. You may have wasted a lot of years because you've been trying to do your thing. Now, if you're going to do your thing, you're going to just kind of go in circles in life. Do you realize the purpose you're on earth right now? If, 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 I, if you were to say, if I were to say to you, what, what's... What's God doing in your life right now? Let me tell you something. The number one thing that God is always doing, no matter where you at, is He is working according to this purpose which He's had from eternity past before you even showed up on earth. And His purpose is to make you like Christ. That's why verse 28 says, and He uses what? All things. Now what's all things mean? The good that comes my way, the, the, the blessing, the adversity, 
the trials, the ups, the downs, the disappointments, the failures, the successes, the mistakes, my sins, my weaknesses, my triumphs, my joys, God, my pain, my suffering. God is using everything to accomplish His purpose of making you like Christ. So wherever you're at today, it's part of a predestined plan. You say, but I don't like it. Well, look, you got to take that up with who? God. God chose you in eternity past. He chose you specifically. He knew you before He created anything. Back in the dateless, timeless, eternal past when there was only Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, God knew you. What an awesome thing. And He set His love upon you. And He chose you in Christ. Now, some of you will ignore me and ho-hum this away, but guess what? Then you will miss your niche. There are no shortcuts to this. I didn't make the rules. God did. There's no greater feeling in life than to wake up every day and say, I know why my Creator put me here. And I know that I am doing with my life what my Creator created me for. Every Christian should have that experience. But now listen, what we have to realize is we are not going to get that experience until a lot of growth takes place in our life. So don't get frustrated. Where are you at today? You may not be there. That means there's work that needs to still be done. And you have to be humble enough to accept there's more work that God has to do in me. There's more breaking. There's more humbling. There's more lessons of faith that have to be learned so that I can what? Get there. So that God can bring me there. And you may be willing today, or you may be one of those people saying, oh, you know, I'm glad I'm saved. I got a bunch of things to do on earth. Got to, you know, I got to get, get a career, got to get a wife, got to get a family, got to go on vacation, got to save some money. Well, if that's, if that's what you want, I will tell you. You're happy being saved, but that's all you'll get. Maybe, a, you know, a few spanks from the rod once in a while when you get out of line. But that's all you get. And what a sad, empty, mundane life you will have lived. I'm living for a woman. I'm living for the kids. I'm living for money. I'm living for a career. Well, you ain't living for nothing then. You ain't living for the purpose for which God put you here, for which you were created for. Every one of us ought to have a longing and a desire. Like David said, my heart pants after you. Like the, the deer does after what? The brook, the running brook. We ought to have a thirst for God. We ought to have a deep desire in our heart to yearn, to want to know God. And God, I want to know you, and I want to, and I want to know why you put me here. What is it that you want me to do, Lord? Now, here's the problem. A lot of people think that they have to get that answer immediately. And they don't get it, and they get what? Frustrated. God ain't going to show you that answer until he has prepared you for it. There is a life of purpose and meaning. There is a niche for you. And God's purpose is I want to make you like Christ so that I can place you in the position at the exact right time, in the exact right place where I want you to be using what I gave you to fulfill my purpose. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I'm what, but here's the frustrating thing. Very few Christians ever find the niche. Very few Christians ever find their niche. Because very few have the tenacity and the determination to be willing to take up their cross daily, deny themselves, and keep walking with Jesus and doing right even when everything's against them even when everything's going wrong, even when everything's hard, even when the night is dark and the morning time don't seem near. When people are against them, when it seems like God hasn't heard their prayer and has forgot them, when there's temptation on every side, when there's health problems and financial problems and burdens all around, they throw in the towel. 
Now we all fall. Listen, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Like I told you, I feel like I've come to my niche. And I know there's what? More. More. Exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. But you're looking at me this morning. You're saying, well, you're, you're, you're pastor. Look at that. You, you know, you found it. But me. Yeah, well, listen. I didn't find it like that. Talking many years of loneliness, obscurity, isolation, disappointment, frustration, falling down a lot. Devil knocked me down plenty of times, but he didn't knock me out. Get back up and keep on what? Walking with the Lord. Sometimes it was a crawl at a snail's pace. Sometimes it was three steps forward and two steps what? Back. But what I want you to understand, if you have that longing for God to, in your heart to say, I want to know you, God. And I'm not talking about an emotional experience, though God gives us those here and there. I'm talking about the life of faith. That deep down in your heart you say, I will not be satisfied with life until I know God and the purpose, the niche that he has for me. If you have that kind of desire in your heart, and some Christians don't, be honest with you. Majority of Christians don't. And the majority of them are distracted by all other kinds of things. But if your heart has that kind of desire towards God, then you are in for a fantastic life. What I'm hoping to do is motivate every one of you to want that in your life. Are you understand what I'm talking about? What greater thing could you, could you have than to know that I know the exact thing that God put me on the earth for? Now you know he wants you to glorify him. You know he wants to make you like Christ. But why? So that he can put you in your niche and use you for his glory. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, come after me. It's your choice. Do you want that life? Yeah, I want to know why I'm here and what my purpose is. Well, you really sure? Let me ask you something. Now, right now, before we go any further, let me play the devil's advocate. Now, don't raise your hand. Don't speak out. Just keep this in the privacy of your own heart. Do you really want to find out your niche? Do you really want to know God in such a way that your heart longs after Him and thirsts after Him? And that's the motivating priority of why you're living and why you're on earth because you want to know your Creator that way. And you want to find out your niche, that exact place that God has for you, fulfilling his purpose. Ask yourself that question this morning. Do you? Is there that burning desire in your heart after God? I want to know you, Lord, and I want to find my niche. Let me show you something. Look at this, it says, if any man will come after me, verse 23, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow who? Me. That means daily I am saying, Lord, not what I want, but what you want. Lord, not my will, but what? Your will. Do you see it? I have to die to self. Things that don't belong in my life need to go. People that don't belong in my life need to go. Wrong attitudes that I have and wrong thinking needs to what? Change. It needs to go, right? Are you with me? And I have to come to the fundamental place of saying, God you be God. I ain't going to be God no more. I've had my little mini sovereignty running my own life and I don't like it, Lord. We don't want to give up 
the rights to the throne. Oh, we think we did. We think we did. You know, well, I don't do this anymore. I don't do that anymore. And I go to church and I give money. Yeah, but there's still so much of our life. Of our, and really, it's not just so much the things that are in our life, really. It's our heart. Listen, letting go of the things that God says you don't belong in your life is easy once your heart's right. It's our heart. What does this, what does this say over in Proverbs? My son, give me your what? Heart. If you give your heart to God, He'll break it first, but after he breaks it, he'll set it what? Free. Why is he got to break it? Because there's so much in it that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's got to change us. You say, why do I go through these struggles, these valleys, these deserts, this wilderness, these dry times? Why? Why the pain? Because God has to break our heart before he can set it free. We all want the freedom in Christ, but we don't understand how to get there. We all want the niche, the abundant, exceedingly abundant life, but we don't know how to get there, and we don't want to. Once we find out how to get there, we back off. You mean I gotta die daily? I gotta take up my cross? I gotta let God run the show? Mm -mm. Right? Ponder that one. Right? Right? But look what the Lord said. If you don't do it, something's going to happen. You can't lose salvation, but you will lose something. Look what it says. People wonder what this verse means. Many misapply it to mean salvation. It has nothing to do with salvation. It's about discipleship. Read verse 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will what? Save it. So find it or save it. Right? Now here's the thing, what does he mean by that? He means if you don't die to self and take up your cross, you will never find out what your life on earth was meant to be. If you keep it for yourself, you're going to lose the purpose. You're going to lose the niche. You're going to lose that amazing discovery of why my creator put me here and what he wants me to do. I, are you with me this morning? But if you lose it here and say... Lord, here's my life. I'm a broken vessel. I'm a sinner. I'm weak. I'm tired of trying to run the show. I can't do it on my own. I need someone bigger than me. I accept your authority. Here's my heart, Lord. Lord, I long for you to set my heart free. If you're willing to what? Lose it. To deny yourself and take up your cross. What does he say? You will what? Now, do you really want it? Well, here's the thing. You may say, yeah, I, I want it, but I'm afraid. I don't want to let go. That's okay. Let me tell you something about your Father in heaven. I remember a long time ago <laughs> praying to the Lord, Lord, I want your will. Okay? And Lord, I want you to do it, and don't listen to me when I complain. I, I remember saying this to God. I remember praying, Lord, I want your will. And, I, and don't stop. Because I had a longing in my heart, but I had a fear of letting go and surrendering to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I knew that if at least I was willing to say, God, don't stop working. Because I knew eventually he'd what? Break me enough to get me to the point where I'd what? Let it all what? Go. And what happened? Freedom. Everything I wanted, the joy, the peace, the power, the purpose, the meaning, everything I wanted but was afraid to what? Let go to achieve. He said, if you keep your life here, if you say, my life here is about me. Thank you for saving me, Jesus, and I'm glad, I'll be glad to see you in heaven. I'll give a little money, I'll read the Bible occasionally, and I'll pray, but Lord, the rest of it's mine, and I'm going to go after what I want, then you will lose your life. Your life on earth will amount to nothing as far as what? Spiritual value. Eternal reward. It'll amount to nothing. And I guess I'll tell you something else. You will be very dissatisfied. You will. But if you lose it here and say, Lord, I'm going to take up my cross. And it's got to be daily because you can make the decision today. But to tomorrow, the devil will convince you to do something better. Okay? It's got to be daily. It's a, de a decision that you make every day. You make it today, that's great for what? 
today that ain't going to work tomorrow. You can't live on past what? Victories. Okay? Right? The devil will oppose you every step of the way in your pursuit of who? God and his purpose, your niche for your life. Are you with me here? Okay? Now listen to me. Can I say something to you today? Listen. You cannot be Christ-like by your own efforts. All right? You can't. That's why God put the Holy Spirit in you. And that's why he designed all kinds of circumstances to take you through to produce some fruit. But guess what? Fruit takes what? Time before it's harvested, right? If you set out today and you say, I'm going to be kind and sweet and faithful and loving and gentle and meek and have self-control, guess what? That'll last about an hour and a half, maybe. For some of you, till you get in the car and argue with your wife. All right? All right? If you're single, you might be able to go a little longer. Right? But... But what you will find is you can't produce the fruit of the Spirit. That is the result of God taking you through the all things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's the result of the Holy Spirit working it in you over what? A process of what? Time. You don't plant apple seeds today and have apples what? Tomorrow. That needs water and sun and weeding and a long season of what? Waiting, and then what? The fruit comes. The fruit of the Spirit is the result of God's work in you. All God asks of you is take up the cross daily and be willing to let me do the work. All God says is don't fight me. Be willing to let me do the work. That's what God says. He needs you to be willing. You see? Guess what? That boss that treats you bad and you have to deal with it every day, those family members that drive you crazy, those children that test you and break your heart, those financial burdens, those health problems, all the other issues and details of life that you're going through, all the reaping what you sowed because of your bad decision. Guess what? Those things, God, yeah, he's going to deliver you from them, but he's right now using them to change who? You. To make you like who? Christ. Do you understand it? And that's the ultimate what? Good. My mama told me something long ago. She was a very simple Christian. She passed away in 1990. But I never forget something she told me. She said, John, God will always prepare you for what he has prepared for you. See? God doesn't send us out unprepared. Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his what? Steps. In other words, he just basically said in a short sentence what I took a while to say. I don't have the wisdom, the power, the strength to run my own life. I have to be willing to submit to an authority greater than mine and give up control, which means handing over my heart and with all the risk that that what entails. Because to us at first, it's risky. Can I trust God? Sure you can. But you won't discover if you can trust him unless you want. Hand it over. Are you willing to? Folks, I'm going to talk a lot more about this next week. This is an important issue. Very important issue. Nobody wants to live a life without purpose and meaning. Nobody wants to come to the end of their days and say, what did it all amount to? What was the sum of it? What did I really live for? On your deathbed, if you live 75, 80, 85, if you live 90 years, when you get there, don't you want to know, Lord, got a peace and contentment because I know I fulfilled the purpose for which you designed me for and placed me on this. You don't want to get to that place and say, thank you for saving me, Lord. I missed out on some things. What an empty life.
We don't want that. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, this morning we're so grateful and thankful to have had this time to study and note these things from your word. Father, I pray that you challenge our hearts. Lord, that we would surrender our hearts to you. Be willing to take up the cross daily to submit to your authority, Lord, that you might be able to do that work in our life using the all things, the good, the bad, the difficult, the painful, to make us like Christ, Father. I pray for each one here that we'd have the willingness to do that, Lord, to let you work, to submit to your authority that we might all find our niche, that we might all discover that place that you have for us, Lord. I pray that you prepare us all for those things that you have prepared for us. Give us a willing heart. We dedicate the last moment of the service this morning to anyone here if you're not saved. Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He paid your sin debt. Today he offers you eternal life and the forgiveness of sins if you will believe upon him as your Savior. The scripture says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Right now in the privacy of your own heart, in your own mind, in your own words, between you and God. You can tell God, I know I'm a sinner. But I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for my sins and rose again. And Lord Jesus, I trust you this morning as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you for dying for me, forgiving my sins. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I'm going to take a moment of silent prayer for anyone who wishes to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior.